Hello, thank you for joining us today. Entrepreneurs in Christ consists of a tribe of marketplace ministers doing business with godly values and with an emphasis on marketplace ministry. We are confident you did not stumble upon this page by chance, but we believe God divinely orchestrated this moment and you were handpicked to hear this message. We implore you to sit back and feed your spirit with the undiluted word of God, which is able to build you up as an effective kingdom entrepreneur and marketplace minister. We ask that you subscribe to this page as we release fresh content that will confirm your faith and convictions to maintain a righteous stand with God on a weekly basis. Also, please do like this video, click on the like button, share with a friend, share with a family member and leave a comment or question below where necessary. Thank you and God bless you. Bye. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your grace. Father. I ask, oh God, that you open our hearts to receive the undiluted truth of your word. Let grace abound. Let grace abound. Father, we ask, oh God, that you texture our hearts. Let our hearts be good ground for your words today. Anoint my tongue to speak to your people. Not by power, not by might. It is by your spirit. And so we invite your spirit. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Guys, you're welcome to our Wednesday discipleship class. If you are new at Entrepreneurs in Christ, I want to welcome you. My name is Damala, co-founder at Entrepreneurs in Christ. This entire month of May 2023, we are looking at a very important topic and it's called the grace for abundance. The grace for abundance. We have said and stated that abundance supersedes wealth. Abundance can birth wealth. If it is true that you have this grace in your life, hmm. it can birth true wealth. And I've defined abundance as having more than enough. That's simply what it is. I have given us scriptures and um, I think we can all relate to what I said. The state of abundance means you have more than enough. That's the simplest way we can define it. The simple state of more than enough. If it's money, you have more than enough to meet your needs that day, that week. If it is food, you have more than enough. If it is cars, you have more than enough. <laughs> hmm. You know, when I began to train my mindset, or let me put it this way, when my wife began to train my mindset for abundance, some of us were raised by our grandmothers. And if you were raised by grandma, grandmothers are very strict. They have a very 
interesting sense of being prudent. And they are prudent for good reason. So my father used to travel a lot. My mother traveled a lot as well. The one person that stayed in our house constant besides our nanny and house help was grandma, my grandmother. And because we had different kinds of kids, our cousins came to live with us at a very early age. So we are four in my family. I'm the third of four children. Three of my cousins came first, then two others came, first cousins. In total, we were nine that grandma took care of. And so grandma will take one meat and she will slice the meat between four of us. Mm -hmm. And that's how I grew up. Not because we didn't have enough, but because we were raised by our grandma. And so when I got married and, you know, as a young man, when I was a single man, I knew how to manage myself. I managed myself, I did. <laughs> Until I got married to this woman. And my wife had a very different background from me. She was raised in abundance. So imagine her serving me my dinner with three, four pieces of meat. And I'm like, ah, what is this? No, this is too much. I had to unlearn. And I had to learn to accept certain things because abundance starts with a mentality. It starts with a mindset. And if you are like me and you were raised like that, you would find it very hard to shift from that mindset. I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes I still catch myself. Yesterday, my wife grilled turkey to eat with jollof rice she made for dinner. She grilled four. She only ate one and she left the remaining for me to eat. I just ate one. I said, this is still too much. It's a constant journey because your background affects you as a person. How you were raised affects you greatly. Background shapes the future. And that's why if you have children, take my advice, be very, very careful, be very intentional. Who visits your children? And who you raise them around? Because abundance starts with a mindset. It starts with a mindset, I'm telling the truth. When my wife and I were dating, think of it as two different people. You have a young man who was raised with that mentality of manage, manage. And you have a young woman who was raised to think of abundance. And so I will take her to an expensive restaurant and my wife will eat something and then she will eat, she will leave, she will just eat like maybe half or a quarter of the food. And then the rest is, she's not, she's done with it. We'll take it home. And I know that she wouldn't eat it because she wasn't raised to eat leftovers. So it was like a waste of money for me. And I used to think, how can people just have this mentality? Not knowing I was the one that needed to be changed. Don't get me wrong, there's a place to, for being prudent. But that mindset, if you are affected, that mindset can lead to poverty very quickly. 
you have to learn to think abundance you have to learn it and it's a constant struggle until you fit into that frame yeah until you do now if there's somebody you've been praying for you can share the link with them so that they can be blessed i intend to give us some truths today and my job is to deliver these truths and once i do it's up to you to accept them but i'll teach this from the depths of the life my, my wife and i have shared June 1st we'll be celebrating 10 years of marriage. I'll be teaching it from the depths of scripture and the strength of my intimacy and walk with God. What I have learned about this grace. The first thing I want you to know that this grace exists. Give me scriptures, Victoria. I have come to give life abundantly John 10:10 10, 10. give me that scripture John 10:10 10, 10. let's start with scriptures and i want you to pay special attention Victoria if at any point in time i get muted by zoom or whatever it is please if you don't hear my voice beyond 30 seconds be quick to unmute me yeah so does not come except to steal to kill and to destroy i have come that they may have life we identified day on monday and that they may have this life more abundantly and i established the fact that life can be abundant and there are two pathways to this thing in the kingdom on monday we talk about the pathway of the blessing the provision made for christians in christ jesus in the location called zion yeah you have that location and then i could not get to talk about the law which will, is what i will discuss with you today i have practiced both i can tell you confidently that they work for those who know me very closely they know that i don't have time for nonsense and i don't baby people i tell you as it is i'm not a pulpit minister i'm a marketplace minister i'm not here to win your tithes and offerings God sustained my family and I by God's grace. I have my own businesses. So if anything we share here is being spoken about as it pertains money, I'm giving you the plain truth. It's up to you to accept it. Now, you need to listen to Amy's message because she built the foundation for my message. and she did a fantastic job teaching that thing. I was so proud of her. What I'm going to teach today is a build up from her message. So if you have not listened to her message, you will need to listen to that one to understand. Well, you can understand what I'm going to teach, but it would be better for you to learn of that particular message. Listen to it. and be blessed by it because it's the foundation for my message there is an abundance of everything you want upon the face of the earth as i speak it exists it exists is it cars it exists i keep a car in every major city i visit I'm not bragging I'm telling you my life.
Is it houses? It exists. Is it money? It exists. Maybe you're looking for building materials for your house. My friend, it exists. Sand, for instance, exists in large quantities. Cement does as well. Everything you are looking for right now is upon the face of the earth. You need to find a way to make it navigate towards you. It's not going to drop from heaven. It's upon the face of the earth as I speak. And there are ways to call it. The Bible says money answers. It answers all things. Anything that answers is a servant. Let's establish that fact. God never answers. You can't call God and he comes at Rebecca like, like a dog. No, he doesn't do that. He comes when he wants to come. But the Bible says money answers. So there are those things that call it and money will say, yes, I am here. What you lack is the understanding of how to call it. Now, the first thing I shared on Monday is the blessing. I took it very easy and very simple because I wanted to furnish understanding in your mind. Because that route exists. It exists. That route exists as well. It's just that people do it the wrong way. So they don't, they don't see that it actually exists. They don't. They don't. The blessing. We sing that song. I am here to the blessing of Abraham. Abraham's blessings are mine. But are they truly yours? Do you know how to call them? And so I showed us that the pathway is stewardship and worship. The devil took Jesus to a high mountain and said, If you will bow down to me, I will give you everything you see. I will give it to you. Money is a gift from God. Resources are a gift from God. Abundance is a gift. If you will bow down to me. And what was Jesus' response? You shall worship the Lord your God. Him only you shall serve. In other words, he was telling you that through worship as well, you can get these things. But worshiping God, not the devil. Do not bow down to the devil. Like many people have done in the occult. God is the person that created everything. And so if you bow down to God, if you worship him, my friends, the foundation of true wealth is worship. Hear me well. The foundation of true wealth is worship. The spirit of God is here. I can feel him. You have to learn to be a worshiper and to attach your worship with stewardship. This is the access route to the blessing. And here, so long as he is a child, it differs not from a slave, even though he be master of all. He is the one that was ordained to control everything in abundance, but he has the mentality of a child. So we cannot differentiate him from a slave, even though he is master of all. Stewardship is the pathway to sonship. You have to be a steward. It is sons that take care of their father's business properly, not a steward. It's my father's business. And for that reason, I'm going to do the best to make sure it succeeds. There is one such an AIC member on this call as I speak. That person works for their father's business. You know why they will drive it like it's their own? The mentality of sonship and daughtership. And so God cannot entrust many people 
with abundance, even though the allocation is there in Christ Jesus, the blessing. Because we have the mentality of someone else. We've not yet demonstrated through stewardship that we can be sons and daughters. But in case that one is too high for us to comprehend, I want to discuss one that is something that anybody can practice. <laughs> Listen, if you get what I'm going to teach today, your life will change like night and day. And not just to get it, but to practice it. If you practice it, if you practice it, All right. Hmm. Let's start from Acts 10, 34 to 35. Acts chapter number 10, 34 to 35. Thank you, Victoria. All right. I'm going to start explaining. The first thing I want you to know is that this law works whether you are in Christ Jesus or not. Hmm. It sounds weird, right? I know. The proof that it works is that the Israelites did not accept Christ. Anywhere you see a Jew, they are excelling anywhere in the world. They did not accept Christ when this law began to work for them. They still haven't. And the law is still producing results as though the devil does not exist. So look at what Peter said. The Bible says in this scripture, Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. Another one says, God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, whoever fears him and walks righteousness is accepted by him. Where? In every nation. In every nation. Anybody who fears him and who walks righteousness is accepted by him. This law pertains to both the fear of God and righteousness. That's the first thing you must know. That's the first thing you must know. Give me Deuteronomy 8.18. Anyone, you can be Jew, you can be Greek, you can be Ghanaian, you can be Kenyan, you can be Nigerian, you can be South African. The Bible says anyone, anyone, anyone that fears him and walks righteousness, is accepted with him. Now look at this scripture in Deuteronomy. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. It is God that gives you the power to get wealth. He gives you the power to generate wealth. 
And what's the reason? Why does he give you the power to get wealth? Because if you don't understand the use of a thing, now as Monroe says, abuse is inevitable. The reason why God gives it is to establish his covenant. It is to establish his covenant. In other words, the power given is a response to something. It's a response to covenant. Follow me. Give me Ecclesiastes 11, 1 to 3. Ecclesiastes 11, that's 1 to 3. Yeah, yeah, the Spirit of God is here. The Spirit of God is here. As a person I see, you're going to step into supernatural provision. You would understand what I am teaching today. You will begin to apply it in your life and you will step into supernatural provision. All right. This scripture says, cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a portion. That's how I memorized it. But this one says, give a seven. Give a portion to seven and also to eight. Why should you do that? You do not know what evil will be upon the face of the earth. So there's even insurance policy in this thing. If you're telling me to give a portion to seven and some to eight. And the reason is because I cannot predict the evil that will come upon the earth. Ah, there's something that I should know about. Now go back to Deuteronomy. I'll come back to the scripture. Where it says the power to make wealth, to get wealth, the power. I've defined power in the past as the ability to do work. Hmm. Power. Power here is not dunamis. If you're in the school of evangelists, I took you on a journey for about seven weeks teaching you about power. It's not any of the ones we learned. Because I can see some students here from the School of Evangelists in the marketplace. It's not exousia. It's not any of the ones we know about. Power here is transliterated koa in Hebrew. But it simply means ability. Friends, when this power is active, it equates the grace for abundance. Hear me well. This is the one you need. Eh? The one that powers abundance is this kind of power. It's called koak. If you do dunamis, you will not get it. Perhaps you want to engage exousia or iskris, kratos, the different types of power in the body of Christ. You won't get it. This one is called koak. It's a very uncommon kind of power. And to be honest with you, I have not heard more than one person speak about it. I had to find it myself. I'm not teaching you something that I learned from someone else. But there are very few people that have this understanding I'm going to share with you. It is koak. It's a different kind of power. And when this power is active, I am telling you that it is what generates wealth and abundance. It generates it. It's like though you have a generator in your house. And my friends from Nigeria will understand this. 
It can give power to your light bulb. It can give power to your microwave. It can give power to an iron, probably. Well, you want to power an HVAC system, AC system that is very heavy. It won't work for it because it's the wrong kind of generator, generation of power that you are using. There are some ACs that will generate that will carry one or two ACs or some generator like that. But three, four, it will not work. So you must know the kind of work you are trying to do. Because that equates the kind of power you must generate. And the one here is called work. It means ability. Yeah, it does. Follow me closely. And when this power is active, the result of it, huh? like how dunamis will bleed to miracles, healing. The result of this kind of power is that it generates the grace for abundance. But it works by a law. How is that power gotten is the question. How is this power gotten? Because if you do what you do at the gym to build spiritual power, you are doing the wrong thing, my friend. Perhaps you go to the gym and you begin to lift muscles, lift weights, and you, you are building muscles. You, you have biceps coming up and you're very proud of yourself. When a demon appears to you, it will ridicule you because you've generated the wrong kind of power. And that's what many Christians are doing today. You are in the gym. You are building your biceps. But where it really matters, you are weak. I have friends that have heavier biceps than I do. If you meet me, I'm very slim. Very slim. But these men with all their biceps are under my spiritual covering. You know why? They are different kinds of power. And you cannot do what you do at the gym to build spiritual power. So even when it comes to spiritual power, there are different kinds of power and how to generate them. Now, the key to the grace for abundance is tied to giving. Amy established that in her teaching. That's the law. But not just any kind of giving. Not any kind. There is a very specific type that you do. It is that specific type that I want to explain to you. Now, let me borrow an example. My sister now who led the prayers has a thousand dollars. Now gives 10%. And for my people who have problems calling it tight, just don't call it tight. Call it something else. That solves your problem. For the sake of this illustration, I'll call it 10%. Now gives 10% or $100. Now has $1,000. But now she gives $100. That is giving. Okay? Anybody will call that giving. But if now, now says, Oh, Damola, I want to not give 10%. I want to give 40%. Or I want to give 50%. 
at that point it's no longer given now has engaged a higher law hear me well i want to teach you how to engage the grace for abundance and the reason why i'm going to give you this truth is because i love you and i'm tired of seeing people suffer because they are doing the wrong thing over and over and over again that's why i'm going to teach you this thing <laughs> my wife is not here right now mm you would have told you that this is our life the second na says i want to give you 40% what she is doing is no longer giving she has engaged a higher law that type of giving is called sacrifice now give me some 50 verse 5 i want to show you how to make a covenant with god because I thought on covenant once. People kept on asking me how do I cut covenant with God? How do I cut covenant with God? How do I cut covenant with God? And the reason why sometimes I don't say these things is because you would think I'm looking for your money and I don't have time for that. I really don't. In all humility God has blessed my family. And I came from the church system so I know how it works in the church system. I know the speculations. I know how people feel. When they themselves are broke but they see pastors living in luxury. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. Now, I'm going to teach you how to make a covenant with God expressly. Because the power to get well. That's one you always talk about but don't know how to do it. It's done by covenant. The scripture says gather my saints to get that to me god is speaking which ones which parts of your saints which kinds of your saints those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice you want to cut covenant with god you want the most high committed to your affairs especially in your finances hear me well you cut a covenant with god by sacrifice the kind of giving i explained and not doors when she stops giving me that 10% and she has started giving 40% she has engaged a higher law that law is called sacrifice the bible says in some 50 verse 5 would you gather to me those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice friends the highest form of giving is sacrifice and sacrifice is the highest demonstration of your faith and trust in god it is the highest believe me it is the highest nothing compares besides your salvation when you say i accept christ as lord and savior the highest form of sacrifice or demonstration of your faith is sacrifice let me put something in our teaching You have to understand the way this world is designed. If you want to save your way to riches, you will never get there. It's very hard.
And we define insanity as doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. When you see a madman taking his head and knocking it on the wall, and he goes back and he does it again, you can conclude that he is insane. Because he's doing the same thing over and over again. Have you not learned that the way you are doing it is wrong? Look at the result it has produced for you. Does that not tell you that something else has to be engaged? If you will break through, uh, no, it won't be by the way you've been doing it. And this law is called the law of sacrifice. Anybody can engage it. They don't have to be a Christian. They don't have to be a Christian. Now, a law is a constant. I explained that to you on Monday. If I jump up in China and I come down, it's a law. If I jump up in Nigeria and my feet touch the ground, if I jump up in Kenya, my feet touch the ground. In the United States, then we can see that there is a law in effect. That law may be invisible. Something is making my feet come down. Hear me well. That's how this law operates. So that if anybody in China practices it, huh? Gravity does not affect you if you're a Christian or not. It affects everybody, even a baby, up to a hundred-year-old man. If you jumped up, you will come down. It's a constant. You have to design your life by a constant law. So that if you jump up, you can, you can predict that in the next few seconds, you will come down. The law of sacrifice opens the gate of abundance. It's a law. It's a law. And you don't have to believe me. Gather my sins. Those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And I said sacrifice is the highest demonstration of your faith and trust in God. Let me be clear, because I used Nas example with a thousand dollars. I'm going to be very frank with us today. You see this tight fistedness we have as Christians. Well, continue. When we talk about sacrifice, It pertains to what costs you the greatest. And there is a very easy litmus test to know if you've sacrificed. Eh? There's a very easy test. If you don't say, ouch, yay. If you don't feel the pain inside you, friends, you have not sacrificed. It's that simple. David said, I will not give to God what cost me nothing. If you listen, when I was a younger Christian, came to the United States 2001, I was going to a redeemed church. I knew they would call for offering, and so I would I would change one dollar bills. I will have them handy. And so when they call for offering, I knew where I located, I put them. I would just bring out a dollar bill and put it there. Because I can call offering two, three times in the service. Building fund, regular fund, Thanksgiving fund. I would just put one dollar. If that is your life, okay. 
My wife is actually be nice. I will be nice. I will be nice. If you don't say out, that is the litmus test that you have not sacrificed. I'm giving you the truth today. If you don't feel the pain, if your account has not cried, you've not sacrificed. And that's why this law is hidden from people. That's why it's hidden. Although it's a law, not everybody finds it. Not everybody finds it. Because the natural human element will kick in. It will, it will tell you, your, it will computerize your bills for you. Uh -uh, okay, have you forgotten that? You are owing this brother. <laughs> Our rent is due. Have you forgotten? By the time it does that to you, you will, the real you will pop out. And then you will say, what am I thinking about? I allowed this guy to get into my head. Then you go pay your bills. That's why the law is hidden. The Bible says the kingdom is given to people that have childlike minds. You accept it the way it is. You don't second guess it. You press send, transfer quickly so that you don't have a chance to change your mind. That's how I started doing it. All. I forced myself into this law. My wife and I. This is our daily life that I'm preaching. I did not prepare extra for this for this teaching. I'm just teaching my life. The highest form of giving is called sacrifice. And sacrifice is the highest demonstration of your faith and trust in God. It is what cost you the greatest. Listen to me, my friends. If you want to get out of lack, you need to fight the demons that have plagued your family for generations. The demons of poverty. They are ancient, ancient spirits. They've been living for a very long time. I can give you examples of cases I've dealt with that the demon just sat in a corner waiting for the person to turn on particular age since they were born. And once they turn that age, it attached on them. Wow. Because they are not in a hurry. They are more ancient and they are more wise. Your human intelligence cannot outsmart them. And so if you, if you must get out of poverty, You need to do something ancient and something wise. Many of us wonder why we are in lack. It's because we are using the wrong key. Listen to me. Even in the kingdom of God, there are the right keys to unlock different systems. Look at your house, for instance. Perhaps you live in Ghana or Nigeria. Does one key, does that key unlock every, every door in your house? The key you use for your, for your gate, does it open your front door and all the rooms in your house? If your answer is no, why do you think the kingdom of God is like that? In the spirit of being frank, If you use the wrong key on the right door, it will never open for you. To never. To never. I guarantee you. I did that for many years. Before the Spirit of God sat me down and said, listen to you. The grace I put on your life is to teach my word. I cannot not tell you the truth. And many people on this call 
you have been using the wrong key on the right door oh my listen there are many people that use prayer and they think prayer is the key prayer is a key it is not the key use prayer as a key for the grace for abundance you will suffer i'm telling you the truth you must understand that abundance itself is a system of its own in the kingdom just like healing is a system there are different systems in the kingdom and if you use prayer as the key for this door your life will suffer like apostle Solomon says you will die like a chicken you really will and you will wonder if the world has turned against you and if god exists peter said i perceive that god is no respecter of persons and so anyone who understands the law and complies with it even if they are not a christian they will find themselves enjoying abundance i'm telling you the truth it's not god's fault it's your fault and so there are christians living in deep poverty let me rephrase there are prayer warriors living in deep poverty and there are unbelievers living in abundance and these unbelievers are not christians it's not god's fault the law is there for anybody to use let me say it again there are real kingdom keys and if you use the wrong key for this door it will never open it won't open the bible says the labor of fools weary them they know not how to enter the city you will keep searching for the way and you would think it's prayer some even think it's fasting but because it is a kingdom system and it has its own door the key that opens this door is not prayer it's not fasting it is sacrifice i'm telling you the truth you don't break laws laws break you if i wake up and say today i decide to walk on my ceiling by myself i will fall down and break my head that's how this law is designed And many of us have been doing it how we know being tight fisted being tight fisted the bible says there we see that we told more than needed and it leads to poverty does it not apply to you or cut to you that it's not working it's not working let's stop doing it and amy did a fantastic job giving my message a background because she explained how the system is already designed against you and that's why you must engage a higher law i'll tell you for free now this world is wired contrary to the kingdom what i mean is this it is wired in the direct opposite all the laws in this world Your mentality says we told keep save 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 the kingdom law says give 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 up until the point of sacrifice they are different and if you want to be a kingdom man or a kingdom woman you must engage kingdom laws to live in this world you must give me matthew 14 16 21 
it's wired contrary. Let me tell you something, my friends. Let me tell you something. When God began to pull me deeper and he wanted to help me, he said, come out. I came out one day. My house is not far from the airport in my city. He said, look up into the sky. I looked up. I looked up. And then he said, do you see that plane? I said, yes, I do. He said, you can watch this airplane jet into the sky. And each time you see this, I want you to know that if that plane can break the natural law that governs this world, so can you. Each time I see a plane in the sky, I wonder how it breaks the law of gravity. And the Spirit of God told me that if it can break it, the law that pulls everything down in this world, you too can pull it. You have to engage a higher law. And so the airplane does this by something called the law of aerodynamics. What law have you engaged? I hope to God your response is not saving. The Bible says Isaac sowed and reaped that same year a hundredfold. How did he do it? How did he do it? I'm showing you a mystery that if you take it from me, your life will change. It will change. And to tell you, I came from a very far place. My wife used to call me El Stingo. You know what that means? A stingy man. Very stingy. <laughs> Talk about prudence. I'm more prudent than you, I can almost guarantee you. For God to have worked on my mind to make this thing I'm telling you my lifestyle. Oh, I came from a very far place. And I have results to show you. Lest we burn. The Bible says in this scripture, <laughs> when it was evening, his di disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour is already late. Can you send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food? I want to show you how this kingdom is structured to operate through this story. God's kingdom. Because this law I'm explaining to you is tied to your knowledge of it, which I'm giving you now. Your obedience to do it, sacrifice, and your faith. But first, let me show you how this kingdom is designed. Jesus said to them, they don't need to go away. You give them something. And they said to him, we have here only five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them here to me. Now, follow this story from here. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. That's the first thing Jesus did. The Bible says he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And then he took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed it and broke it and gave the loaves to the disciples. What did he do? He blessed it. Then he broke it. Then he gave the loaves to the disciples. It didn't stop there. There's a semicolon and it says, and the disciples gave it to the multitudes. That's where it stopped. Folks, I rendered to you that this full stop you see here was meant to be a comma. But because the multitude had the mentality that you and I were using or have been using, it stopped there. 
Verse 20 says, so they all ate and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments that remain. Do you want to talk about abundance? 12 baskets from five loaves and two fishes. Now, those who had eaten were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. In this story, in this story, 5,000 men were fed. I have a question for you. Who experienced abundance? Who experienced abundance? Because we can say that Jesus had the anointing of a thousand times more. So that anointing multiplied five loaves. That's the only way we can say that it fed 5,000 men at the very least. Okay? Jesus was in the position of God. The Bible says he gave it to the disciples. He gave the loaves to the disciples. Okay? Follow me very closely. When he gave it to them, they gave it out. As long as it was being given, that thing kept on multiplying. It stopped at the end user. So who experienced abundance? Was it the end user or the disciples? I wish we could talk. It was not the end users that, that experienced abundance. I hope you know. Because they only had enough and they, and they filled and they were filled. The disciples were the ones that experienced firsthand. Because how do you explain five loaves and two fishes turning into baskets, 12 baskets full of fragments? So they were giving it out. It was multiplying in their hand. As they were receiving from God, they were giving it out. They were giving it out. The, the, the multitudes were meant to be passing it out as well. As, like they were giving it out. That's how this kingdom is designed. That as God gives it to one person, you don't hold on to it. You give it out. And you give it out to the point of sacrifice. Then that person that gets it also gives it out. That's how God funds his kingdom. But when you, they give it to you and you become the end user. And you sit down. Bam, I've arrived. The abundance you'll experience will be shocking. Because this multitude they lived again to be fed another day. I hope you know. I render to you the truth today. This kingdom is so designed that you are a funnel. You are a funnel in the kingdom. And being a funnel means that God will bring massive resources into your hands. And these resources, you keep passing them. As long as you keep passing them out, you will keep experiencing what they call the grace for abundance. You must never forget what I'm saying today. So giving is the key to step into this grace. But it's not how you stay in this grace. Because many people give, you give your 10%, your tithe, your offering. And I know many titans who are still in deep poverty. So that key is not working for you. It's not working. You've been tightening 10 years. You've been tightening 15 years, 20 years. Things have still not really changed for you. There's something you're doing wrong. There's something you're doing wrong. I personally know many titles that I lend money to. Okay? Both in the US and Nigeria, name it. I, I know many. I can give you their names. So what are we doing wrong? If it's abundance you want, it is beyond giving. It is called sacrifice. That is the key to the grace for abundance. This is the law 
that opens the door to the kingdom grace of abundance sacrifice you can see the end users here they receive the bread and eat it yamu 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 but for as long as it was being passed on it kept multiplying that's the secret that you don't know about this kingdom now let me define sacrifice for you so that you understand but keep in mind from this story now you are never the end user of the blessings god is giving you you make that mistake you will not experience abundance Like Apostle Selman says, it's not called favor unless it can repeat itself over and over again. If you cannot predict the result, what you have is incidence or a coincidence at best. I can predict my life. You know why? I've engaged a higher law. It doesn't depend on you giving me offering. I know how the law operates. Now, let me define sacrifice for you. Ola, I want you to put this on the chat in capital letters so that it is expressly clear. Do you hear me? Sacrifice is anything above the 10% you give God. Put it there. Let's speak the truth today. Let's shame the devil. Sacrifice is the key to this law, to this grace for abundance. Sacrifice is anything above the 10% you give God. Yeah, bless you, my dear. You want to learn the key to the grace for abundance? I'm showing you a system that the devil and the demons that have plagued your family, they cannot outsmart you when you do this thing. Never. This law is engaged through sacrifice. Now, the highest form of sacrifice is blood. The highest form is blood, and blood is weighed. For instance, the blood of a cow carries more weight in the spirit than the blood of a chicken. Okay? That's why you will see in the Old Testament how they always gave different kinds of sacrifices. Because there was just enough to meet the need of the sin or whatever needed to be wiped away. And that's why Jesus had to come and die for us. The Bible says the blood of bulls and goats will not suffice. So even in humans, there is levels. There are levels. The blood of a cow carries more weight in the spirit than the blood of a chicken. The blood of a human being carries more weight in the spirit than the blood of a cow. The blood of the Son of God carries more weight in the spirit than the blood of a regular human being. It's in levels. But now, the next highest form of sacrifice is called money. And money is also weight. See, in those days, you had to sweat. Okay, let's say you were a farmer. You'd farm, you get your produce, you give a tithe or whatever they call it, okay? And then you will, if you want to engage sacrifice, you will give more of your produce. In this day and time, sacrifice is now summarized in whatever holds the value of your sweat, your blood, and your tears. Blood is the equivalence of a human being's blood, sweat, and tears. Because with your blood, with the hemoglobin in your blood, you went to work. You used that breath God gave you to work. 
You sweated. Perhaps you were in Lagos traffic. You sweat. Coming back from work. Your tears. Knowing how, how hard it is to meet and make ends meet. So money is the summary of everything that you do. So now, you don't have to go spill the blood of a chicken, a bull, a cow, or even your own blood. Your money represents blood in the spirit. It's the essence of your entire month, your last two weeks, your entire paycheck, whatever it is. It's your, it's your money. And money is weight. Now, you are the one who determines the amount and the extent of your sacrifice. You are the one. Every man determines when and to what extent they want to walk in kingdom wealth. Every man. God put it out of his hands when he made it a law. You comply with the law of gravity. If you jump up, you will come down. You can be a 300 pound person or 12 pounds. It will apply to you either way. It's out of God's hands. It's now in your hands. So to the extent you want to enjoy abundance, that is the extent you engage this law called sacrifice. Do you see why I said there is the need for a total mind shift when it comes to this grace? A total mind shift. Because the devil has played us in the body of Christ. Every grace has something that triggers it. Every grace. For salvation, it is confession. The Bible says, with the heart, man believes. With the mouth, confession is made unto soteria. For access, it's the Holy Spirit that triggers it. For we have access by one spirit. The Bible says, for abundance, it is a kind of giving that is called sacrifice. It's not just ordinary giving. You give your 10%, you don't stop there. If you give your 10%, that's where it ends. You will become like the many titles we know that things are still tight for. That's the truth. And the grace for abundance primarily pertains to sowing and reaping. Now let me say something very clearly. God does not need your money in heaven. The streets are paved with gold in the first place. So there's no amount of money you can give God. But God needs your funds to run his kingdom agenda upon the face of the earth. He has a need for money that is not minted in heaven, but here on earth, so that his kingdom agenda can run well. Okay? Giving alone is sowing. But if you want to get out of poverty and come into abundance, you step it up and you become a compulsive sacrificer. Compulsive. You would do it to this extent that the remote spirit is like, this guy has become abnormal. I'm telling you the truth. Let me tell you how it works. Seeds produce harvest. Okay? There is a law of seed, time, and harvest. You know that law already. The Bible says, for as long as the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest shall not cease. But the harvest of the seed surpasses the seed because God's law multiplies the result. In one mango, there is one seed. But if you plant the seed of one mango, you get many mangoes from it. And so you can get many mangoes from one seed. The harvest always surpasses the seed. Always. It's a law. And you have no right. Let me be very clear. You have no right to expect abundance. Huh? 
if you don't have seeds in the ground, you have no right. I hope you guys don't uh, dislike me after this teaching. <laughs> but at least I would have given you the truth. You have absolutely no right. I like how a friend puts it. Rain is a new sand if you don't have seed in the ground. It's true. What makes it hard for you to engage this law is not just that you sacrifice once or twice. You have to keep doing it on a daily basis or at the very least on a weekly basis for abundance to come up. You must keep doing it. 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 Oh my goodness. Victoria, give me Ecclesiastes 11. Ecclesiastes 11. All right. Everybody look at me. Can you guys see me? I can't see anybody on the screen, so I want to know. Can you guys see me? Just put on the chat, you can see me. This is a pack of seeds. Can you see this pack of seeds? You can see it. All right. Can this feed me for a whole year? Yes or no? Can it feed me for a whole year? All right. If you don't think that can feed me for a whole year, why do you think you're sacrificing once or twice in a year can feed you for a whole year? You want abundance, you must become a compulsive planter of seed. The only thing God can bless is your seed. It's the only thing. You must give God something to work with. He will not rain money from heaven after all. And if those seeds that you just saw cannot feed me for a year, you have no right to expect to enjoy abundance because you just sowed once or twice. You have no right. Even a farmer that goes to the farm knows better than that. Let's give ourselves the truth. The Bible says, yeah, cast your bread upon the waters. You will find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight. For you do not know what evil will be on the earth. Then he says something. If the clouds are full, if they are full of rain, they will empty themselves upon the earth. If they are full, they empty themselves. My friend, you have no right to expect to be a partaker in the grace for abundance if you have no seeds in the ground. If those grains cannot feed me, if they can't feed me for a year, that's what many of us look like in the spirit. You do your 10% and have defined sacrifice as anything above your 10%. That is the real sacrifice. You will feel it. If you have not said, ouch, you haven't felt it. Let's not lie to ourselves. You must make it a point of duty to sow seeds on a daily basis, no matter how small. When God showed me this thing I'm teaching you, huh? Every day, listen. Oh my. Victoria, give me Hebrews 5 verse 1. Every single day, there must be something we sow, my wife and I, every day. Every day. Beyond our 10%. 
I'm not talking about 10%. Because seeds must be in the ground if you want to experience abundance. We plant an orange tree in the ground. It blossoms in the summer and there are oranges all over the, leaf, the branches and we say there is abundance. That's where it came from, seed in the ground. The Bible says here, for every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things that pertain to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. As a high priest, which you are, if we say marketplace ministry, you are a priest, you are a priestess, your priesthood speaks in the heavens. You cannot appear every day without a sacrifice on your altar. But many of us think it's just prayer. It's beyond prayer. When they say that the wood must, the fire must not go out, it's not just prayer. Oh. It's sacrifice. Anything God calls sacrifice. Anything. So when I'm doing my 6 p.m. prayer watch, I have sent a transfer to somebody. I've sent a, a transfer. Every day I appear at 6 p.m. to pray. A seed is in the ground already. I say, God, I've appeared again as a priest. I've appeared again before you as a priest. Here is my sacrifice on behalf of my family. Here are our sacrifices. You think it's just prayer? Like I said, if you use the wrong key for this door, thinking prayer is the key, meanwhile prayer is only a key, you will suffer. Apostle Salman says this back, you will die like a chicken. Prayer is not the key, it is only a key. The key to this door, that one is called sacrifice. So during the pandemic season, I was distraught. A business my wife and I did in Nigeria did not work out. We lost so much money. I went on a trip, retreat that year, and was crying out to God. Crying out to God. Why? Why, 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 why? After all, you saw me make all the moves, all the transfers. Why didn't you stop me? It was in that retreat that I received the instruction to start entrepreneurs in Christ. And to God be the glory, people's lives have been affected. We can count testimonies. We, we give God all the glory for that. But then a strange, strange instruction came. It wasn't just that God wanted us to start this thing. He said, I want you to sponsor it from your income. Who does that? It's like you saying, start a church. Don't collect offering and be the one to sponsor everything. I said, maybe I'm not hearing well. I slept, slept on it. This, the thing was still there. I want you to start it and don't collect offering. Run it from your income. <laughs> And so we started doing that. In fact, the fact that we now opened for partnership was after a whole year of running. And because a, a spiritual mentor said, this is not the best thing because you and your wife only will reap all the rewards of this thing. Let people partake of it. And so we opened it up for partnerships and very few people partner with us. Very, in fact, they are not up to my my one hand the fingers on my one hand if I'm being honest with you consistent partnership we bless God for it say oh God thank you let me tell you what happened to us my wife is on this altar I lied to you not the kind of money we have never seen in our life it came 
and it came like a mighty rushing. You know when they said <laughs> on the day of Pentecost, that's how it came. The kind of wealth that we've never seen in our lives. I didn't know God was setting us up for, for, for us to prosper this way. Because we just finance it. Every month we finance it. In fact, at one time, I don't want to say some things that we've been doing. Is it widows? We sponsored widows. People that we've never met before. People that they lost their husbands due to religious crisis. Over a year, we're sending them their monthly allowance, their monthly feeding, paying their rent, everything for them. Sacrifice. And I, I just have their names and their account number. I don't even know their faces. Came from my spiritual father. We were honored to do it and we did it smiling with love. School fees for students, we, I still paid one last week. Full for the whole year, paid it for it for the whole year, the school fees. This is our life. So when Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God. What he was saying is seek ye first to finance the kingdom of God and seek also its righteousness. Then all these things that people are looking for will be added. Someone said Christians are boring. You have no idea. My wife and I went on an expensive vacation to Monaco last year and we had the time of our lives. There is clean phone, hear me well. Christians can have fun in this world. I don't have to go clubbing. The kind of money that will let you have the kind of fun you can't even imagine. God said, gather to me my people that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. You can be the greatest prayer warrior here if you don't follow this principle I'm giving you. Poverty will be your best friend. I watched somebody and I had to call her. I said, don't ever make that prayer again on an EIC altar. You're commanding financial angels. You have no right to command financial angels if you have no sacrifice on your altar. What are you doing? Just be done with this brainwashed form of Christianity. If your Christian work hasn't cost you something with God, you are a joker. You have no right to command financial angels to go bring anything or do anything if you don't appear with sacrifice on your altar. This is the secret. Now, let me tie them both so I can round up and... Taking time. Wealth and abundance is first spiritual before it becomes physical. The foundation of true wealth is worship. From my teaching on Monday, it is worship. Believe you me. The devil said, Bow down to me, and I will give you everything you see. And Jesus said to him, you shall worship the Lord your God. Him only you shall serve. In worship and your service of stewardship, that's when God begins to release to you the blessing. And in stewardship, there is sacrifice. Do not be like the multitudes that sat on that grass that day. And instead of them to pass on the bread and fishes, it ended with them. That's not how this kingdom is designed. All you will hear is that we gather 12 baskets full, which if that thing could have been a thousand baskets. But because of our mentality, it ended with us. We ate the fish, we ate the bread, even the seed, we ate it. The grace for abundance 
is directly connected to worship, stewardship, and sacrifice. And there is a reason why people go extra lengths to get it. Bring me back Psalm 50. You've been asking me here, every people, I always get the text. How do I make a covenant with God? Think about covenant with God. It's very simple. It's here in black and white. God gathers to himself those that make a covenant with him by sacrifice. That's the express way to make a covenant with God. And sacrifice is anything above the 10% you give God. So if you want to give God 15%, that is the amount that will be measured back to you because the Bible says, give and it will be given back to you. Eat what you gave will be given back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. If you want to sow in the level of pressed down, so be it. You will get back to your pressed down rewards. But abundance, so true abundance is the level of running over. That's the truth. There are to me people that have made a covenant by sacrifice. This is how you do it. In fact, one of the ways we activate the presence of God is by perpetual sacrifice. He is attracted to sacrifice. People think prayer and fasting is powerful. You have no idea. Sacrifice is 10 times more powerful. I'm hearing somebody's question. You're asking me, where do I sow? It's simple. You sow where you grow. That's the truth. You don't sow anywhere because not everywhere is fertile ground. Jesus said the sower went out to sow. And there were four kinds of soil. You sow where you grow. Give me Psalm 126, verse 6. Psalm 126, verse 6. You can use the scripture. Whatever I work, just give me Psalm 126. I want to move fast. I want to move fast. I want to move fast. When my wife lost her father two years ago in Nigeria, that was the month I shut down the business in Nigeria. Shut it down. And God said, all the funds that used to go to pay salaries, we had about 17 people in staff then, take all of those funds and sow it every month. Every month, sow it. You would think I'll be trying to recoup back what we lost. We were sowing like mad people. Every month. Every month. Every month. Besides sponsoring widows, paying people's school fees, paying rents for people, financing kingdom projects like church building projects. Anywhere my spiritual father was going to have a meeting, we would send funds ahead of him send funds there who pay for his accommodation just sowing like mad people I'm telling you it's because I love you guys the Bible says he will continually goes forth weeping that's why I said it must say ouch for you if you are not weeping my friend you have not sacrificed that's the beat stick he will continually goes forth weeping Bearing precious seed. Seed for sowing, this one says. That person is bearing seed. And the reason why the seed is precious is because he could have eaten that seed with his family. Yeah, he could have. For goodness sake, we have two kids. That college phone is a, is a priority as well. We could have put it there. So it is precious seed. That person shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. And what will he do? He will be bringing his sheep. 
He will bring his sheaves with him. That's the promise in scriptures. Friends, the key to abundance, they are tied to kingdom kings. And if you do everything I've told you, worship, still worship and sacrifice, you will reap the results perpetually. Only those who seek the kingdom first find it. Only those who seek the righteous standards of that kingdom find it. Give me Proverbs 23, 23. Proverbs 23, 23. It's already open. Thank you. Buy the truth, sell it not. Also buy wisdom and buy on instruction and buy understanding. There are four things you are advised to buy, my friends. The truth, wisdom, instruction, understanding. There are those that hawk it around. There are those who carry mysteries. They have it in abundance so they can sell it. And there are those who have found this secret and they did not sell it. What I'm doing today is I'm selling it. It's a secret. And at the same time, it's a law. Now I keep balancing all this while I close. While you are waiting for the return of your sacrifice, there are some things you must be doing. Because I said there is the need for a total mindset shift. And out of those list of three things, the first is that, number one, you must begin thinking abundance. I gave you my example, how I grew up, my grandmother, my wife is here. She's had to retrain me as a husband, as a head, retrain me to think in abundance because my background affected my thinking. It shaped my values. So you have work to do on yourself. You must start thinking abundance. You must start thinking it. Listen to me. My grandmother loved Eba. Eh, Gary? She loved it. So my mother traveled to the US and she traveled a lot during those days. She would give us Eba and Eredu and soup. Till today, I still cannot eat Eba. You know why? I was scared with that thing. I look at people that go to a restaurant and you will sit down and you will order a bar. I look at them as if they are sinning. Something that I was punished with when I was a kid. I'm still working on myself because your background will to shape and affect your values as a man, as a woman. So for me, I cannot conceive eating a bar. It was punishment food. And if you keep thinking that way about abundance and wealth and money, there are frequencies of energy levels you will never stay on until you learn to conform to that standard because you can attract things. And the first thing God needs for your faith to come up and leave the realm and the level of poverty thinking. You must. If you conform to that standard, you will not see the results quickly. It's a law, so it will work. But it will take you time to understand. There's also the part of you investing on in inside earthen vessels. Okay, that's the second thing you must be doing. I gave a charge once called treasures in earthen vessels. Find it on YouTube. There are treasures buried deep within earthen vessels. That's people, human beings. You must identify the earth that carries the harvest you are looking for. You think only a farmer knows how to sow on good ground? You came from the earth. So just as a farmer sows beans, maize into the ground, that's how I can sow money into you because you are earthen vessels. So you must find good ground. 
In Luke 8 verse 5, Jesus said, A sower went out to sow. A sower went out to sow. This my wife can hedge me on. Look at this, my wife. <laughs> this woman. <laughs> the woman I married. <laughs> She's something else. You need to plant on fertile ground, my friends. Forget all this nonsense about you are given to a man. The man is having private jet. You are given to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are not given to a man. Your harvest is between you and God. If you keep thinking like that, ah, no, he's already having this, this thing. You will be on the same level for a long time. A long time. Luke 8 verse 5. You'll be there for a very long time. You're not given to a man. You are given to God. So there are, there are grounds that you must identify. Eh? that are fertile ground, grounds that can give you back a return on investment. You must be very strategic with your seed because you only have so much. You only have so much. My wife and I are compulsive givers, not because we don't have bills or needs, but because we understand the kingdom system. We understand it. So a sower went out to sow. I can look at now and say, my God, what a good ground. And I just put money in our account. What am I doing? I am that sower that has gone out to sow. I'm that sower. One of our partners here called me when he said, Brother Mola, I didn't know that you whose ground is so fertile. I said, what do you mean? He's not here today. He said, bro, every time I've sowed, I've gotten promotion upon promote. I said, well, it's not me doing it. It's God that's doing it. It's between you and your God. You're not giving to a man. Forget that nonsense. You're giving to God. Lastly, you cut covenant with God. Stop playing games and cut a covenant with the Most High God. And you cut that covenant by sacrifice. At Entrepreneurs in Christ, we give 50% of everything that comes in. 50%. You heard me right. As soon as it lands our account, the same day it's going out, half of what we get. That's how you cut covenant with God. Then you sit back because you've given quality seed. You can expect your running over return. So, last piece of advice I'll give you guys. Plant what you expect to harvest. Plant what you expect to harvest. Don't plant nonsense seeds. The Bible says the earth brought forth after its kind. If I sow coconut, I will get coconut. You know, one day somebody gave me a wristwatch. Mailed it all the way from the UK. Nice person. Very nice wristwatch. I wear it once in a while. That person can expect to reap a wristwatch one day. Because that's what she sowed. The earth brings forth after its kind. I can expect a car because I've given a car before to someone. I can expect it. So you plant what you expect to harvest. The Bible says with the same measure you meet, your seed will produce after that kind. If you want financial harvest, then you sow financial harvest. Financial seeds rather. That's how it works. Never doubt. Don't forget the faith aspect of this thing. Believe God can bring the seed and the harvest back to you. Believe that. Be patient. There's a season for waiting. Okay? Just be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. There's always a season between planting and harvesting. If you plant it today and tomorrow it is here, to be a small harvest. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, a man shall eat good from the fruit of his mouth. Okay? A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. So you will eat good from the fruit of your mouth. You say what you want to see when you sow. You must appear before God as a priest, a priest, and say, God, 
I have sowed seeds by sacrifice. I expect a harvest. So you keep on saying it. Keep on saying it and believe it to happen and to happen for you. Have high expectations. Surely there is an end to poverty and your expectation shall not be cut short. And God will now begin to bless you through men. You know why? Because he is the source. But never look to those men as the harvest. If you do, then those men will begin to control what they bring you. God is the source. So you don't control my harvest. I know what to do. I control my harvest. Because I know how this law works. Don't forget, wealth and worship goes together. It is in the place of worship that wealth is truly distributed. So to get wealth, you must bow down to something or someone. Let us pray. Father, we bless your name. We give you all the glory. Thank you for your word. Let it take root downwards in your people and produce fruits upwards. I've given the truth you gave me to tell them. I have delivered the truth. Let those that you want to promote begin to practice this principle. And then begin to bless them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Guys, I've gone past time, so I apologize. Tomorrow, I'll turn our prayer marathon continues. We're going to have the theme is deliver us from evil. And um, I want to encourage everybody here to make it a point of duty to come and pray. Prayer is a key. It's not the key for abundance, but it opens other doors. I'll tell you tomorrow. So make, make it a point of duty. Amen. and I will be on the altar at 8.30 a.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time. That translates to 1... No, I'm sorry. 8 a.m. is 1 p.m. Nigeria, 12 noon Ghana, um, 2 p.m. South Africa, 3 p.m. in um, Kenya and Tanzania. Come be a part of it. You will be blessed. I'm going to be re- uh, um, showing you some things that you should know about. And, and it's very important. That's all I would say. Okay. But yes, sorry for taking over the time. God bless you all. Victoria, over to you if you have any announcements. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Also, tomorrow we have um, a business webinar by 5 p.m. Ghana, 6 p.m. Nigeria, 7 p.m. Right. Um, South Africa, and 8 p.m. Tanzania and Kenya time. Thank you, everybody. All right. All right. God bless you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. We hope you have been tremendously blessed by this message. You can help us spread the message of Marketplace Ministry by sending the link to this message and sharing it with just one friend or family member. As a tribe of Marketplace Ministers, our goal is to focus on building kingdom entrepreneurs with kingdom truths that can transform their lives and destinies. Finally, we don't collect offerings at Entrepreneurs in Christ. But if you would like to sow a seed into this project, you can do so via World Remit or PayPal, or you can request our account details in specific countries. Thank you again, and God bless your every move. Remember to like, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. God bless you.